Hey guys, Mr. B here and welcome to the virtual lab on incline planes. As you can see, I've got an incline plane here set up for us to be using and we're going to be taking a look at how this simple machine changes the amount of force that we need to use to raise objects when we go up it. So we're going to be using this nice little physics car with some 1000 gram weights on it, two of them. So this is two kilograms of added weight on this car and we're going to see again how this incline plane works. So we'll be doing three different lengths. We'll start with one meter, then we'll go to a 1.5 meter long incline plane, and then a two meter long incline plane. We'll see how the force input changes depending on our length and our height of our ramp. And then of course at the end, we're gonna calculate mechanical advantage. All right, let's get started. All right, so one of the first things that we need to do is we need to actually measure the height that these books are, because this is gonna be the height of our incline plane, and this is gonna tell us our output distance. Okay, so this is the distance that the uh, incline plane is gonna be raising our object for. So I have a meter stick here. We're going to put this up next to the books, and I'm reading it at about 19 centimeters. Okay, so at about 19 centimeters, um, it's going to be our output distance, so record that on your data table, and then we'll next move on to measuring the weight of this car, which will be our output force. We need to determine what is the output force for this object. Okay, now the output force is essentially going to be how much this object weighs, um, and you can think of it as how much the inclined plane is essentially lifting. Okay, so what we need to do is we're going to take this object, we're going to attach it to a spring scale, and we're going to lift it till it, the bottom of this reaches the top of the books here. And we're going to read how much force that takes to do that, and then we're going to record that on our data table for our output force. Okay, so I'm going to stand on a chair. This is actually uh, <laughs> pretty tall. So we're going to pull this up, this cart. Hopefully my string doesn't break on me. I used uh, three pieces, so we should be good. So let's pull it up. And I'm reading, let's just make sure that we are right at the top here. I'm reading that it is at about 27 newtons. So output force is going to be 27 newtons. Make sure that you record that on your data table. Okay. And we're going to move on then to doing our first inclined plane that is one meter long. All right. So welcome to our first inclined plane. This inclined plane is one meter long. What we're going to be doing is we are going to be taking our spring skill. We're going to be pulling on this cart and pulling it up the incline plane. And when we've got to a point where we're applying a steady amount of force, we're going to read what the spring scale says. And this is going to be our input force. This is the amount of force that we have to put in in order to raise this object using the incline plane. So here we go. Let's give it a pull. And we're going to pull steady. And I am seeing it says about six newtons. All right, so we are going to write down six newtons for our input force for this first inclined plane that is one meter long. All right, guys, we are here for the second inclined plane. Now I have Miss Elger here helping me out. <laughs> so um, this inclined plane is 1.5 meters long. Um, so again, we're going to take our cart, we're going to put it at the very end, and we're going to pull it up. And as we're pulling, we're going to get to a point where we're applying steady force. And at that point, we're going to read what the spring scale says. That's going to be our input force. And we're going to record that down on our data table for our lab handout. So I'm going to take the cart here. We're going to try to finagle our way between Mrs. Elger's arms. There you go. And she's simply holding this down so that way our ramp doesn't rock up. So all right, we got our cart here. So I'm going to start to apply some pressure. And I'm reading the spring scale, and it says it is about 4 newtons. So for this one, we're going to write down four newtons on our data table for the 1.5 meter inclined plane. And we're going to move on to the two meter long one. All right, guys, we're here for our last inclined plane. Now, this one is two meters long, so you might not be able to see the end over here. And I apologize. It's just that I can't back my camera up far enough. But this is two meters long. The two meter mark is right here at the very end of the table. The one meter mark, of course, is up here at the top of the books. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to take our cart, we're going to put it at the very end, we're going to start pulling up this ramp, and as we do so, we're going to get to a point where we have a constant force being applied, and at that point, we're going to read the, the spring scale, 
see how much force we are applying. We're going to record that for our input force for this two meter long inclined plane. So Mrs. Elger again is going to hold this down just to make sure that it doesn't rock up on us and ruin our results. So again, we're going to finagle our way through here. I know, right? The joys of trying to do labs. So oh, we'll get there. All right, so we're going to put it all the way down to the bottom. Perfect. Uh-oh, too far. That's fine. There we go. All right, so here we go. Let's start to apply some force. And my spring scale is reading about three. Oh, we're hitting some friction there. Let's make sure we're not hitting that. There's no friction. Uh, I'm reading about three newtons. So three newtons on my spring scale. We're going to record that as our input force for our two meter long inclined plane. And that is the last one we have here. So from this point, we're going to move on to the post lab and take a look at calculating some mechanical advantage and answering some questions. So I'll see you there. Hey everybody, Mr. B here. and Welcome to the post lab of this Inclined Planes virtual lab. Um, so we're gonna be taking a look at the data here and doing some calculations and then moving on to answering the questions that come afterwards. Um, so these numbers here that I've written in my data table are from the video. If you do not have these numbers written down or you didn't write them down correctly, I would make the corrections right now. So pause the video make those corrections because we're gonna need these numbers to be correct in order for us to do the calculations in this next portion, okay? So, um, first thing that we need to do is calculate the amount of work done. Um, now, we can calculate two types of work. We can calculate input work, which is the amount of work that we had to do in this lab, and we can calculate the output work, which is the amount of work that the machine did in this lab, okay? What I'd like you to do is I'd actually like you to calculate both. So if you could for me, I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to calculate the amount of work that we did in each trial and the amount of work that the inclined plane did in each trial, okay? So pause the video, do those calculations, and then you can hit resume and I'm gonna show you how I got the numbers for this. All right, so here are the numbers that I got for each of these. Um, in order for us to calculate our input work, we have to use our input force, which for the first trial was 27 newtons because we just lifted the car straight up vertically. And we're gonna multiply our input force by our input distance. Um, now here I have NA for input distance, but I guess technically our input distance is 0.19 meters because we had to just lift it to the top of the books, which were 0.19 meters. So um, our input work is 5.13 joules and then our um, output work in this case is also gonna be the same because our output work is the output force, which is the weight of the car, multiplied by the distance we had to lift it. And in this case, it's gonna be the same, okay? But as for our trials two, three, and four, our input work for trial two was six joules. And again, I got this by taking our input force of six newtons, multiplying by our input distance of one meter. I got six joules. Um, and as for our output work, our output work is still gonna be 5.13 joules because the machine is still gonna be lifting the same object, which was 27 newtons, okay, that's the car, lifting it vertically, multiplied by the height of the ramp, which we didn't change. All we did was we changed the input distance, we didn't change the output distance. So you'll notice that the output work for all of these trials is the same number. The input work also happens to be the same number, and that's because, again, I'm taking my input force, for trial number three, which is four newtons, multiplying by my input distance of 1.55 meters, and I got six joules. Same thing for trial number four. So these are my numbers. If you didn't get those calculations correct, make some corrections, and then let's move on to the next part, okay? All right, so the next thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to calculate the mechanical advantage of the inclined plane for each trial. Now there is an equation for mechanical advantage given on um, the worksheet at the very, very top. Okay, so right here, mechanical advantage is equal to input distance divided by output distance. So if we take a look here, um, we have an input distance column and an output distance column. So again, I'd like you to pause the video, do the calculations here for mechanical advantage, and then you can hit resume, and I'm gonna show you the numbers that I have. All right, so the numbers that I have for mechanical advantage, in trial number one, mechanical advantage would just be one because uh, the amount of force we had to use to raise the object and the amount of force that the machine did to raise the object is exactly the same, so it's gonna be one. 
Um, as for our um, trial number two, I took our input distance of one meter divided by our output distance of 0 0.19 meters, and I got a mechanical advantage of 5.3. Um, for trial number three, again, I took my input distance of 1.5 meters divided by our output distance of 0 0.19 meters, and I got a mechanical advantage of 7.9. And then for trial number four, I took two meters divided by our output distance of 0.19 meters, and I got a mechanical advantage of 10.5. So hopefully the numbers that you got were the same ones that I did, but if you have different ones, again, make some corrections here. All right, we're gonna move on to the questions here now at the end. Looking at question number one here, uh, it says which trial, one, two, three, or four, required the least amount of input force? Okay, so looking at our input force column, it looks like that trial number four required the least amount of input force with only three newtons. So we're gonna put that down. So we'll have trial four required the least amount of input force with three newtons. Um, question number two, which trial one, two, three, or four required the weights to travel the greatest distance? All right, now the distance that they're referring to in this case is the input distance, which is the distance that we had to pull the weights. Um, and of these four trials, trial four, again, had the largest distance that the weights had to travel up the ramp. So again, we'll say that trial four required the weights to travel the greatest distance of two meters. Um, question number three, an inclined plane decreases the amount of force required to lift an object but it increases what? All right, so I'd like you to pause the video actually for this one. Try answering this one first on your own, and then I'm gonna explain it for you. All right, so if we take a look at um, our data here, we'll notice that as our inclined plane was getting longer, our distance was decreasing, right? However, the thing that was increasing in this case was the distance that we had to lift the weights up the ramp. So again, it says here that an inclined plane decreases the amount of force required to lift the object, but it increases what? Distance, okay? Remember that as a uh, simple machine increases the amount of distance that you have to put in, it then decreases the amount of force you have to use or vice versa. If, an input, if a simple machine decreases the amount of force you have to use, then it increases the distance over which that force has to be applied. So for this one, we are going to put that um, an inclined plane increases the distance that you have to move the object. All right, question number four, what is the advantage of using an inclined plane? All right, so again, I'd like you to pause the video, try answering this one on your own, and then I'm gonna explain it and uh, tell you what I have. All right, so for me, I would say the advantage of using an inclined plane is that it reduces the amount of force that you have to put in to raise the object to a higher elevation. Um, without an inclined plane, you might have a really heavy object that you have to lift from the ground and put up higher, but you might not be strong enough to do it on your own. So an inclined plane will make it easier by reducing the amount of force that you have to use, in which case, instead of having to lift the heavy object and put it up on top of something, you can just simply push it up the ramp. So I would say the advantage of using an inclined plane is that it decreases the amount of force required to lift an object to a higher elevation. All right, um, question number five, what is the disadvantage of using an inclined plane? All right, so same thing. I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to try answering this question first on your own. And then I'm, uh, I'm gonna explain and tell you what I have. All right, so I would say that the disadvantage of using an inclined plane is that even though it does decrease the amount of force you have to use, it increases the distance over which you have to apply that force. So even though it's easier to move the object, you have to move it a further distance, which ultimately is kind of annoying or at least you know could be tiring. So um, I'm gonna say that the disadvantage of using an inclined plane is that it increases the distance over which you have to move the object. 
which could be annoying. All right, um, question number six. How does the amount of work compare between all four trials? And it says explain. And it says hint, they should be really close. All right, well, if we take a look at the work that we did for all four trials, um, other than the first trial, which was less, um, all three of these trials in terms of the amount of work we had to do was exactly the same. We did six joules of work in every single trial. Um, and the machine did the same amount of work in every single trial. So, um, so we're gonna put down that um, the amount of work done in all four trials, and then we'll put in parentheses, I guess, other than trial one, um, was exactly the same, which was six joules. Trial one, however, only required 5.13 joules of work to be done. Um, so again, three of our trials were six joules. Trial one was 5.13 joules. Um, but yeah, they were all pretty much the same. So um, question seven, how much force would be needed to accomplish the same task with a four meter long inclined plane? All right, so for this one, you're gonna have to pause the video. You're gonna have to do a little bit of a calculation. Um, you're gonna have to use the mechanical advantage equation given at the top of this worksheet. Um, to try to do this one. So again, pause the video, try calculating this out, and then I'm gonna show you how it's done. All right, so here is how you, we need to do uh, the math for this one. Um, so first thing is, we're gonna use our mechanical advantage equation to determine what would the mechanical advantage be of an inclined plane that's four meters long. Then we're gonna apply that to the amount of force that the car usually requires to lift, which is 27 Newtons, to see how much force we would have to use, okay? So in this case, we have a four meter long inclined plane. That is gonna be our input distance. So our input distance is gonna be four meters divided by our output distance. Now we're gonna make the assumption that um, in this hypothetical situation, we are still gonna be raising the car 0 0.19 meters. Okay, so our um, output distance is still gonna be 0 0.19 meters. Um, so if we divide these two, four divided by 0 0.19, we are gonna get a mechanical advantage of 21.1. Now, what does that mean? That means that the amount of force that will be needed to lift this car is gonna be 21.1 times less, all right? So what we're gonna do here is we are going to take our output force, which is 27 Newtons. Okay, so this is our output force. That's the amount of force that it usually requires to lift the car normally. Okay, just vertically, if you just lift it straight up. And we're going to divide that by 21.1, which is the mechanical advantage of this four meter long inclined plane. Okay, so again, what it's doing is it is gonna decrease the amount of force we have to use by 21.1 times. So if we take 27 divided by 21.1, we're gonna find that it would require 1.3 Newtons of input force would be required, okay? So 1.3 Newtons of input, uh, 1.3 Newtons of input force would be required to lift the car up a four meter long incline plane. Okay, so not a whole lot of force, a very, very little amount of force would be needed to lift this car up a four meter long inclined plane. And again, that number makes sense because we can we can just see from our data from, from before, even with a two meter long inclined plane, it only required three Newtons of force. So with a four meter long inclined plane, it's, it's almost, basically it's like half of that, right? 1.3 Newtons, it's, it's basically half of three. Half of three would be 1.5, but. Okay, um, last question, question number eight. Um, it says, if an object uh, must be raised 12 meters, how long of an inclined plane would be needed to provide a, mecha a mechanical advantage of four? All right, so last question, pause the video, try doing this calculation on your own, and then you can hit resume, and I'll show you the math. All right, so um, if an object has to be raised 12 meters, that is going to be an output distance. Okay, so 12 meters is the output. That's the height that the object has to be raised. So our output distance in this case is going to be 12 meters. 
Um, it does say here that the mechanical advantage is going to be 4. So our mechanical advantage is going to be equal to 4. And the question is, is how long of an inclined plane would be needed? So that is basically going to be our input distance, right? What, what is the input distance that we would have to pull this object up an inclined plane to have a mechanical advantage of four if we're raising it up 12 meters uh, in the air? So this is our equation, okay, set up like this. Um, and then to, to do the algebra, we need to get the variable of input distance by itself. It is, of course, being divided by 12 meters right now, and um, we need to get rid of that divide by 12. So doing some basic algebra, if you want to get rid of dividing by 12, we have to do the opposite of dividing by 12, which is multiplying by 12. And if we multiply one side by 12 meters, then we have to multiply the other side by 12 meters, okay? So 12 meters times four on the left, and um, on the right hand side, the 12 meters times 12 meters, those are basically just going to, um, they're just gonna go away, okay, so they're just gonna disappear. And we're gonna be left with um, input distance is gonna be equal to 12 meters times four. Um, and I'm gonna do this on a calculator so make sure I don't do my math wrong. So 12 times four is 48. So 48 meters, oh, I did not. Do that properly, there we go. 48 meters would be equal to the input distance. Okay, so basically in order for us, oh, doing the wrong thing again, there we go. Um, in order for us to raise an object 12 meters up in the air and have there be a mechanical advantage of four, we would need to have an inclined plane that is 48 meters long, which uh, is a really long distance if, if you don't know that. Um, one meter is like 3.28 feet. So 48 meters is uh, a ramp that is like 157 feet long, which is a really long ramp uh, to say the least. So, all right, anyway, hopefully um, you learned a little bit about inclined planes and how they work with mechanical advantage. Um, but of course, as always, if you have any questions, make sure that you reach out and ask me so I can help explain. All right, guys, that's it for this virtual lab. Thanks for sticking with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.